So one of the things about Excel is you often have to do tasks that are repetitive that you have to do over and over again. These can be fairly simple tasks or they can be quite complex. And if they're complex tasks or if you're doing them over and over again, you could lead into making some errors and things like that. And there's ways you can automate this in Excel to actually speed it up. And that's the thing called macros. And macros use something called VBA, which is Visual Basic for Applications, which is the programming language behind it. And one of the most simple ways you can actually create these is to actually record what you're doing and then just be able to play it back. So two things I'm just going to cover here are how to set up a spreadsheet quickly and then quickly at the click of a button be able to set one up again. And the other one is to import some data and make some changes which could include formatting and things like that and then to save it as well. So I am going to expand on these. I do have other tutorials. So for example, when you open up the spreadsheet and create it, it could ask you which, which month you want to start from and then you could it would then automatically fill that in. So let's just give that a go. So one of the things you need is the developer tab at the top here and I've got already a tutorial on my website and also on YouTube that shows you how to do this so go and find that. Um, if you want to find it on YouTube it's youtube.com slash user slash jargon free help or you may have found my website jargonfreehelp.com and just look under Excel and you'll find it there. So I'm on the developer tab and the thing I want to do is record macros. So I want to specifically put these into particular places. So you've got an option here which is use relative references, which I don't want. That is not clicked. We're going to take a look at that as a separate thing later on. So here we go. What I'm going to do is just record a macro. And I'm just going to click here and you'll see it comes up with this dialog box record macro. You have to give it a name. So I'm going to call it setup spreadsheets. You'll notice I used an underscore there. You can't use spaces or unusual characters. So an underscore is OK or no spaces at all. So people may have actually done it like this. That is another way that you might find people doing them. Actually, we'll leave it like that. The shortcut key is a series of keys you can pr press. So you know, like you might do control B for bold. Well, here I'm going to do so I'm going to use Control Shift S here and that will automatically run the macro. Where are we storing this macro? It's in this workbook. It is a script. It is a language that needs to be stored somewhere. You can put it in a new workbook or a personal uh, macro workbook. Now personal macro workbook, which is this one here, is one that automatically opens every time you open Excel. And the beauty about that is you do need a macro to be open to use it, although there's a little trick to not having it happen that it needs to be opened and we'll look at that too. So personal macro workbook, something that you might want where you just press a button and it automatically creates a header with your company logo in it that you might need quite often could be useful right there. We're going to put it into this workbook. Description, my first macro. Always a good idea actually to maybe put some comments in here kind of explaining what you're doing because you might come back to it and think what was I trying to create here. OK, so if I click on OK, it is now recording. You can see that up in the uh, ribbon here, it says stop recording. I also have down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that it says here, well, not that it says, but there is a stop button there. I could click there to stop recording. So just remember, everything you're doing right now is being remembered by Excel. So if you get a phone call in the middle of it and you start talking, it would keep going. And also the other thing is um, if you then happen to switch into another spreadsheet and do things in there, it might start remembering that. So make sure you've got a good bit of time to do this where you're not going to be interrupted. So OK, let's see. I want to quickly create a spreadsheet. It's just going to be something based on a quarter. So we quickly put those in. I'm going to double click that just so that they are auto fitting in the right place. And then I'm just going to have some months at the top. And then I'm just going to have some regions over here. And we're assuming that we've got some sales figures to put in. So we might just want to do this each time. And I'm just going to bold that. So let's just go to home, bold. 
same down here. Bold that, I should have done that here as well. I am going to put in um, my sum in here as well. So we are going to go to my formulas. Let's just hit auto sum. It's those three there that I want. Let's press enter. I can copy those down here. So that's done. So let's just total up these now as well. And again, I'm going to do that. Enter, auto fill it across. So that's now ready for me to start inputting information into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to stop my recorder. I can go into the developer tab and hit stop recording. So I'm just going to switch to another sheet. And what I'm going to do now is first up, I'm going to go into macros. So this is a way you can run it. I can click on macros. There it is. I'm just going to click on run. It's already selected. And you can see it automatically sets up my spreadsheet. And I could start putting in values in here. That's terrific. So I'm just going to delete that. So the other way I could have done it is Control Shift and S is a shortcut key to running it. And you can see how quickly that does it there too. So the other thing you may want to do is say put it onto one of your ribbon items at the top here. So we're going to do that. And we can easily do that by customizing the ribbon here. So I'm just going to right click and choose customize the ribbon. And just very quickly, I can just take um, my macro. So I'm just going to choose here from my drop down macros. So here it is. I've got my setup spreadsheet here. What you do need is a new tab. I'm just going to click on that. And I'm just going to click on that again and rename it to uh, my macros. You can call it anything you like there. It automatically puts in a group as well. I'm not going to worry about changing the name of it, but you do need at least one group there. So I'm just going to click on add and it's added it in. So I am now just going to go down to the bottom here, right down at the bottom of this dialog box. It's got OK. And you'll now see I've got a new tab that says My Macros. Set up spreadsheets. Bang, and that automatically runs it. Now, this is significant, this having this tab here, because I've said to you that a macro needs to be open to run. Well, if it's not open, that's the file that the macro is actually stored in. But if you put it on the ribbon, then what you can easily do is just click on that button. It will open that workbook in the background, which has got the macros in it, and then run it. So there you go. Let me just do that again. It's going to delete that. Hit set up spreadsheet. So one of the things about this macro is it doesn't matter. Let me just delete that again where I start. If I click here, if I click on set up spreadsheet, you'll see it puts it back in the same place every time. That's because it's using absolute references. So if I had recorded this using relative references, it's going to do it from wherever I start. So if I was to click here and then record it, and then next time when I play it back, I click here, it will put it in relative to the start point. So um, we could just do that really quickly. Let's do another quick macro. So I'm just going to call this one. Uh, I'm just going to turn on the use relative references so you can see what I mean. Record macro. Let's just call it relative ref. I'm not worried about a shortcut key because I just want to show it to you. So it's from basically whenever I start. So if I put in hello here and then put in enter date and then I put in the date here, which is the 7th of September 2013. Let me just stop that because if I now click here and go to my macros, and run that, which I can just do by clicking on that and run or just double clicking on it. It's put it in relative to wherever I started. So you can see that if I had used the absolute, if I hadn't turned on that use relative references, it would have put it back exactly into the correct cells each time. And we can see that because if we go into macros here, very quick look, if I go into the setup spreadsheet and click on edit, you'll see here that it actually shows you all the cells it's putting into exactly into B2, B2 to D2, 
and you can see it's got that column selected so it's choosing explicitly those um, cells right there so if I scroll down I can actually see the relative reference one so let's just move down to there and you can see this one uses an offset so it's actually moving three rows down zero columns across so ignore the fact that it says a1 there and again this one is moving zero rows and it's moving one column across this one is using it again it's using going back one column so you can see this one here is all relative and this one here is absolute and that it absolutely goes to specific cells so that's what that use relative cells is all about okay so something that you can play around with and actually try so I'm just going to go back to my spreadsheets here we are back here so that's how you can get it to set something up. You can see it could set up something quite complicated, then you could do all sorts of formatting. But another thing that you might want to do, and there are loads of things you could do with this, is that you might actually want to import something and then you've got some cells that you might want to delete, format, and then possibly print. So I'm going to do this, but not including the printing, but I'm just going to turn my use relative references. I'm going to switch that off. I'm going to choose record macro, and I have got some data that I'm going to import. So let's do the record macro again. Let's just call this one imports and it's to do with uh, film titles. So we're just going to call it films. I could put it anywhere I like here in the personal macro workbook, new workbook, or this one. I'm going to keep it in this one. Um, let's call this one shift F for films and click on OK. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to File, and we go to Open. I do, on my desktop, have one here, which I'm just going to have to change the type of file that I can view down in the corner. And I'm just going to change that to All Files. And in here, I've got one that is called tabledvds.txt. So this isn't an Excel file. It's one that I've exported from an Access database into a text file, and now I'm going to open it. And you can see here, you've probably gone through the import thing, if this is of interest to you, or you've probably done this before. So I'm not going to go into the details of that here. That's for another tutorial. But it's a delimited one. I'm going to click on Next, and you can see this is a repetitive task. It's comma separated, so I'm just going to click on that, and you can now see it's now done everything correctly here. I'm going to click on Next. You'll notice, actually, it doesn't have any of the headings, which is one of the things I'm going to get the macro to put in for me. So I'm not going to change any settings here. As I said, that's for another tutorial about importing data, but just to give you the idea, if I finish that, you can see I can now just change the size of the columns. So just a few to change here. And I'm just going to insert a row. So the macro is remembering all of this. So I can call this one film title. Uh, that's the genre. These are not of interest to me. So I'm just going to delete. Right click, delete. They're gone. Again, the macro is remembering it. This is the director. I'm not interested in this column either. Let's just get rid of that. And that's the price of each one if you want to hire it. So there you go. Simply, I'm now just going to format that up. I'm just going to do a quick bold italic. And it's done. You could even do a save as. So I'm going to change this to an Excel workbook. And I'm going to have, make sure it's on my desktop. And hit save. And the macro has remembered every single step. So let me just uh, close that. I'm back here on this one. What I'm going to do, go to my Developer tab, hit Macros. There it is, Import Films. Now I could do my Control, Shift, and F. I'm going to hit Run. Look at that. It's done it really quickly. It's even come up with, because it's saving it, do I want to replace this? I'm going to say yes. But look at everything that it's done there. And it actually remembered that I've closed it as well, because the macro it's still running. I've forgotten to switch it off. So I'm just going to hit stop recording. That wasn't very good. I should have stopped that sooner because it's now remembered all of those things, including running the macro again. So I'm going to have to go in there and just
tidy that up. As soon as I'd finished it, I should have hit stop recording. So don't forget, I could quickly go to customize the ribbon. I just right click there and there is my macros group. So I'm just going to click on that. Let's go to my macros. There's my import films. I'm going to add that as well. And I could change the um, icon there. So if I go to rename, I could actually find one that might be sort of more appropriate. Look, there's one that's actually got a movie picture on it. Click on that. So that way when I look at my macros, I've got different buttons here. So again, I can just click on that and it's going to start doing it. So that's a quick look at recording macros in Excel 2010. It works the same way in 2013 as well. And I believe in 2007 is pretty identical as well. We're going to now start taking a look at the code. So come back, have a look through my tutorials here because we're going to look at putting a message box in. A message box that gives you choices. So you can have yes, no, or just simply a message. Input boxes so that it can actually put information in there. And also we're going to be going through a whole load of other things, including creating custom dialog boxes, if statements, and so on. So please do come back and check out the others.